Good afternoon, everyone. At this time, I ask that everyone please turn all electronic devices to vibrate. Uh, please mute your microphone on Zoom. Mr. Public Advocate, ready when you are. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of May 28th, 2020. My name is Jamani Williams. Uh, this is my first time joining uh, my colleagues since they started uh, the virtual. I wanna say congratulations to the city council for finding a way to do this. One of the first in the nation. It's my pleasure to be here at the virtual meeting of the New York City Council. If you'd like to follow along, the agenda for today's meeting is posted on the city council website. Uh, for those who would like to, I probably vote, most people know my personal issues with this, but today has even been harder for me. Uh, so this is even a harder one, but for those who would like to, uh, please join uh, for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. Adams. Present. Epi Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Aaron. Thank you. Borelli. Brannon. Present. Uh, just, Mr. Clerk, just one second. If folks sure. could remute themselves after they're done speaking, just so we don't hear all the background noise. Unmute yourself when you want to speak and then remute yourself. I apologize. Keep going, Mr. Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Cabrera. Present. Chin. Present. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Carnegie. Uh, present. Deutsch. Present. Diaz. Present. Drum. Present. Eugene. Gibson. Present. Jonai. Present. Gredenchik. Here. Holden. Here. Kalos. King. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Present. Lansman. Present. Lander. Here. Levin. Present. Levine. Present. Lewis. Present. Mizell. Menchaca. Present. Miller. Moya. Perkins. Present. Thank you. Thank you, Perkins. Powers. Present. Reynoso. Present. Richards. Uh, sending my condolences to Adrian Adams on the loss of her father, and I am present. Rivera. And to Adrian Adams, please up my condolences. I'm present. Rodriguez. Rose. Rosenthal. Present. Present. Thank you. 
I'm sorry, Rosenthal. Uh, similarly, with with love and affection to Council Member Adams uh, on our loss, uh, present. Thank you. Salamanca, present. Torres. My condolences to Adrian, uh, present. Traeger. <laughs> Ulrich. Present. Alone. Alone. Adrian, we're all sending you our love and condolences, and I am present. Van Bramer. Very, very sorry to hear about uh, Adrian's uh, loss. Much love to her, and I am present. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. My condolences to Adrian, and I'm um, here. Combo. I am a present, outraged, Black mother of a Black son. Speaker Johnson. I'm here. Mr. Public Advocate, we have a quorum. Uh, Mike, you, you. Councilmember Kalos, too. Councilmember Kalos, thank you. Thank you. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Pastor Gabriella Cujo Wilkes of the Double Love Experience, located at 334 South Fish Street in Brooklyn. Greetings to everyone. Um, it's been a tough week in the headlines, and so I invite all who are willing to bow their heads with me for a word of prayer. Holy One, we give thanks to you for sustaining us this day. Thank you for the breath in our bodies, the air in our lungs, and the determination in our hearts to bring about justice and equality for all we serve. May the power of your presence grant us the vision, clarity of thought, and fortitude to have a productive gathering today. May we work together in unity, and may we follow the words of your prophet Micah to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. This we ask in the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you uh, so very much, Pastor Wilkes. I'm gonna now ask Councilmember Reynoso to spread the invocation on the record. Councilman Reynoso. Uh, yeah, can you hear me? I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Public Advocate, and I just wanna thank uh, Pastor Javi for being here today. And I make a motion that the invitation be spread in full upon the record. Thank you, Councilman Reynoso. We will now have the adoption of minutes by Councilmember Miller. Is Councilmember Miller there? Oh, yes, I am. Can you hear me, Public Advocate? I can hear you, yes, sir. Okay, I make a motion that the minutes of the uh, stated meeting from May 23rd, 2020 be adopted as printed. Councilmember Miller, point of parliamentary inquiry. Can you please clarify the date of the minutes that are being adopted? May 23rd, 2020. Yeah, I, I believe it's May 13th. May th I'm sorry, May 13th. Oh, May 13th, uh, 2020. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Message and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices? None. Petitions and communications? None. Land use call ups? None. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and happy Thursday. This is our third virtual stated meeting. I hope you and your families are safe and well. I want to thank Public Advocate Williams for presiding today. He has been a really important voice over the last 12 weeks in pushing our city to do more and to think about this in uh, the best way possible and being proactive. So uh, Jumani, you have been uh, wonderful uh, over the last 12 weeks. I'm grateful for your leadership. The city's grateful for your leadership. And I'm glad that you're here today 
to preside over this stated meeting of the council. I hope your mom is safe and healthy, and uh, it's good to see you. Thank you. Uh, uh, before we start, I want to acknowledge the hard work of all New Yorkers to flatten the curve. Without the help and cooperation of everyone, we would not be moving in the right direction that we've seen in the numbers over the last couple of weeks. We must stay vigilant about social distancing as we slowly reopen and mandatory mask wearing, but I have faith in our residents and New Yorkers to do the right thing and to continue to collectively come together in the interest of the entire city. As of yesterday, we lost 21,362 New Yorkers to COVID-19. That includes probable deaths. Let me repeat that number, 21,362 of our fellow New Yorkers have lost their lives due to COVID-19. This number also includes more than 280 city employees and 123 transit workers who showed up day in and day out to serve our city and to keep it moving. Each day the death toll continues to become more and more grim. Our country counts over 100,000 COVID-19 deaths and it is important for, for us to remember that these are not just numbers. These are moms and dads, daughters, cousins, uncles, best friends, coworkers, neighbors, fellow New Yorkers. These are the people that we lost too soon. And one of them was council member Adrian Adams, his father, Irvin Eady. He was found to have the virus after going to the hospital for heart failure. He died this past Saturday. I have been on the phone with Adrian so many times the last many weeks when he wasn't doing well, when he was improving, when she was feeling hopeful, when she was not feeling hopeful. It has been an emotional roller coaster for her. But I want to just say that in the midst of most people in the public not even knowing she was going through this, most colleagues in the city council not knowing she was going through this, Adrian still came to every single committee hearing. She was at the final day of budget on the hearing until midnight with some of our colleagues engaging with the public. I have been on Zoom conferences with her. I have been on the phone with her early in the morning and late at night. She has uh, shown incredible strength during one of the most painful moments that an individual can go through. And I am um, so sorry for her, for her husband, Jay, for her sister, Tracy, for their entire family. Her father was a very strong man who fought very, very hard. And I'm sure Adrian will speak about the indelible impact that he has left on her and their entire family and the city, given what he stood for and what an important part of the community he was. So Adrian, uh, I wish that we could give you a big hug right now. You and I have talked a lot over these last many weeks about your dad and you've told me so many wonderful stories, but I wanted to appropriately recognize him today. Councilmember Salamanca lost his dad at the beginning of this crisis. You lost your dad in the past week. So many people have encountered so much loss and you both have handled it with tremendous grace and continue to serve your communities and districts every single day, even in the midst of dealing with such uh, personal loss. So um, I know you're emotional as anyone would be today, but I'm sending you and Jay and Tracy and your entire families an enormous amount of love. And we just have so much respect for you and what you stand for and the job you've done over these last many weeks. So I wanna thank you, Adrian. As we do during every stated, we uh, would like to acknowledge those who have died from 9-11 related illnesses since our last meeting. Sadly, since our last stated meeting, the NYPD lost two members of the department to 9-11 related illnesses. Detective Thomas L. Neal and retired officer Edward J. Riley. In addition, we lost Reginald L. Porti, of the New York City Department of Transportation. 
We also always acknowledge workers in New York City who have died on the job. And I'm sad to say that Victor Pando, 35 years old, died on May 13th due to an explosion while he was working on the job at the Morgan General Mail Facility as part of the United States Postal Service in my district in Chelsea. I also wanna acknowledge the death of a personal friend and hero to me, legendary activist and writer, Larry Kramer. It is not an exaggeration to say that millions, literally millions of people are alive today because of Larry's activism and I am one of them. He was my hero, he became my friend and the only way that I can ever repay him is by continuing to fight every day for people who are being left behind and ignored just like he did. Larry founded the Gay Men's Health Crisis, which has saved countless people's lives. Larry founded ACT UP, which pressured the federal government to expedite life-saving drugs to help people who are dying at the height of the AIDS epidemic. Larry had a volcanic temper, someone you did not want to mess with, but he also had an incredibly sweet side. I met him when I was 24 years old, two years after I found out that I was HIV positive. I went to a speech that he gave at the Cooper Union <coughs> asking for young people to get re-engaged in activism. And I approached him afterwards and asked for his email address. I emailed him the next day and he asked to meet up. And for the last 16 years, for the last 14 years, he has been someone who has been a thorn in my side, but also a friend in difficult times. One of my biggest honors was in 2018 when I received the Larry Kramer Award from Gay Men's Health Crisis. In his name, he was supposed to be there not that night, but couldn't because he had fallen sick and sent a note instead to be read. Uh, it is a tremendous loss for the LGBT community, for the AIDS community, and for activism around the world. Larry Kramer saved countless lives and changed the course of history. I also want to acknowledge the death of George Floyd, who was killed by police in Minneapolis. Killed, murdered, sadly, yet another black man is dead because of an encounter with the police. The video of Mr. Floyd being pinned down by the police while saying, I can't breathe, obviously is reminiscent of the death of Eric Garner, a tragedy in our city's history. Mr. Floyd's death is another reminder of the work we have to do as a nation to reform our broken criminal justice system and the continuing racial inequalities that we see in it. I hope that the officer that committed this crime is brought to justice. Let's have a moment of silence for Detective Neal, Officer Riley, Reginald Porti, Victor Pando, Mr. Irvin Eady, Adrian's dad, Larry Kramer, George Floyd, as well as all of those who we have lost to COVID-19. Thank you all. Let's dive right into today's legislative agenda. Out of the Land Use Committee, the council will be voting on the following items. Two Article 11 tax exemptions and dispositions of city-owned land. 311-313 Pleasant Avenue for the preservation of 64 affordable home ownership units in council member Kalos, Ayala, and Perkins' districts. And 993-995 Union Avenue to facilitate the preservation of 69 affordable home ownership units in council member Salamanca's district. 266 West 96th Street, which is a disposition of city owned land to facilitate the development of a new mixed income development in council member Helen Rosenthal's district. The project will include 68 permanently affordable units. Lenox Terrace, Manhattan, the council will vote to remove the Lenox Terrace project in Councilmember Perkins' district from our calendar. The application was withdrawn in March. 
Moving on to our legislative agenda, the council will be voting on a few bills today. The first is an immigration bill. It will help move our city towards inclusivity in a way, in the way that we speak, in the way that we conduct our business. Proposed introduction number 1836A, sponsored by Councilmember Francisco Moya, would prohibit the use of the terms alien, illegal immigrant, or illegal migrant, and remove it from our existing local laws, rules, and other documents and materials. These terms would be replaced by the word non-citizen or applicable. This uh, term uh, is offensive, degrading, and it does not belong in our city. And that is why we are making this change. By taking this step, New York City would become the first major US city to remove the term alien from its books. I wanna thank the staff who worked on this, Harbani Ahuja. The next is a resolution that aims to ensure our first responders who are fighting on our front lines, that they receive adequate pay for their work. Our EMS personnel have worked so hard even before this pandemic began, but they have not been paid fairly. Despite that, they have remained on the front lines, meeting the medical needs of countless New Yorkers throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. We owe them fair pay for this work now more than ever. So resolution number 1062A, sponsored by Council Member Danique Miller, the chair of our Committee on Civil Service and Labor, calls for EMS personnel to be equally compensated and have their salaries be comparable to New York City firefighters and police officers. I wanna thank Councilor Miller for his leadership on this and continuing the conversation on how we can lift up workers and ensure parity in the city. Next, we have legislation related to the coronavirus pandemic. The first two bills are criminal justice bills. The coronavirus has sickened so many people in our jails. This cannot be ignored. We must take action to stop the spread of COVID-19 among incarcerated persons and those who work in the correctional system. In order to do that, we must know the full extent of its impact. Uh, we also have to protect correction officers. They have been really effective during this time. Although the city's Board of Correction has released daily reports regarding the number of positive cases, there is still more detailed information that the council and the board have asked for and not received. Pre-considered introduction number 1954A, sponsored by Councilmember Keith Powers, the chair of our Criminal Justice Committee, would require the Department of Correction and Correctional Health Services to create a public weekly report related to the outbreak of COVID-19 in city jails and any future health emergency. The report would include numbers of individuals diagnosed, hospitalized, hospitalized and tested for COVID-19. The proposed legislation would also require Correctional Health Services to provide regular updates to people in custody about the public health emergency and to publish a timeline of significant events. The information that we are requiring is not only important for understanding the extent to which the virus has spread through our correctional system, but it is also critical for the city's efforts to plan for any similar public health emergency in the future. With the spread of the virus through our jails and prisons in mind, medical experts have impressed upon us the urgency that this poses for depopulating our jails in a safe manner in order to flatten the curve. Next is pre-considered introduction 1956A, also sponsored by Councilmember Keith Powers, and it would create a local conditional release commission. This commission would have the authority to release certain sentence individuals once they had served a portion of their sentence. Eligible persons would need community ties and convictions for certain offenses, such as domestic violence and other offenses would not be eligible. Our final bill is a health bill related to the issue of contact tracing throughout our city. As we think about what reopening our city will look like, we know that it cannot be done without a robust regular testing system in place and a plan to trace the spread of this deadly virus. The city is working on preparing the New York City Test and Trace Corps to test, trace, and treat every case of COVID-19. In order to understand how we are managing the spread of the virus, we are, we are tracing down infections and reporting on those efforts. 
Uh, the next bill is pre-considered introduction 1961A, sponsored by Councilman Richie Torres. And it would require the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene or another agency designated by the mayor to ensure a report providing details of the contact tracing program that is posted online and updated regularly. The legislation also requires DOHMH or another agency designated by the mayor to ensure a report on comorbidities and occupation is posted online uh, and updated in a regular manner. I wanna thank the staff who worked on this, on this bill, Sarah Liss and Z Emanuel Halu. And I wanna thank Alana Sivan who worked on the two criminal justice related bills with council member uh, Powers. I also would uh, be remiss, Mr. Public Advocate, if I did not mention the incident that occurred in Central Park on Memorial Day. I know Christian Cooper. He is a member of the LGBT community. He is a wonderful person, a distinguished career. What we saw on that video from uh, Amy Cooper uh, trying to call the police on him when he had done nothing wrong and potentially putting his life in danger was completely and totally unacceptable. And it reminds us of the reality that so many men of color uh, face in this city. Uh, she falsely claimed that she was being threatened by a quote, African American man. And it is important for us to always speak out and uh, talk about when racism is rearing its ugly head in New York City and anywhere else. So I wanted to mention that today. And I wanna thank you again, Mr. Public Advocate for being here to preside over this meeting. With that, I turn it back to you. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker Johnson. And thank you for your leadership. We will now move into discussion of general orders. We will first recognize council members who signed up by email and then recognize members who wish to speak by using the raise hand function in Zoom. Please wait before you, you begin your remarks for our Sergeant at Arms to announce he has begun the countdown clock. The Sergeant of Arms will alert you when your time has expired. Next, next do we have anyone uh, signed up? We do. Mr. Public Advocate, Council Member Powers would like to be recognized. Council Recognizing Member. Council Member Powers. Council Member Powers, your time starts now. Thank you, and thanks to everybody. Um, today we're going to be voting on two bills that came out of the Criminal Justice Committee that I introduced uh, with, the, with the support of the speaker um, to address the public health emergency in our city jails and to better equip the city to respond to future emergencies. I don't have to tell anybody here that this has been a hot spot of infection in our city jails. This is that the city jails have been a hot spot of infection. And we've seen the hard work on the part of the Correctional Health Services, the DOC, and the Mayor's Office of Criminal Justice to ensure that people are safe, whether it's releasing people in city custody through the 6A work release program to temporarily opening up new facility space to allow for more social distancing and the daily efforts of the doctors to keep people healthy. We believe that we need more transparency and a process in place to safely release individuals from detention in this crisis. Um, so we're doing two bills. One is, as mentioned, is about reporting. So we have all the accurate data to know the impact of coronavirus on those inside of our city jails, whether you are an incarcerated person or you are working there and to have clear sense of the data. The second one is around a conditional release uh, commission, which is allowed by state law. And we are actually uh, implementing it through this bill today. And I want to thank Councilmember Farrah Lewis for her partnership on this issue. What it does is it basically creates a commission to review and recommend release for individuals serving a city sentence, which is a sentence on, under one year, to qualify for release under the state law authorizing this. An individual has to have, have served at least 90 days, about three months of that sentence, have verified community ties, such as housing or employment, are not convicted of an offense ineligible for merit time, like domestic violence offenses, and will allow folks to be able to review it. In practi practically, that means that right now during the pandemic, rather than having to have this debate about pushing to get who should be released, we can have a commission set up to be able to review people and make them eligible. Um, um, so I wanna, I wanna thank the speaker and, and my colleagues and Councilmember Farrah Lewis 
for their support on this effort. I think it's an important and meaningful step here. And I just want to end by saying, I, I didn't be, hey, say this earlier, but my, my deepest condolences to our friend and our colleague, Adrian Adams, who I know has been going through a really difficult period in time. We all I know, love Adrian and respect her and I think about her family right now. So thank you. Thank you, Councilman Powers. Mr. Public Advocate, there are no other council members who wish to speak. Thank you very much. Report of special committees. <clears throat> Hold on one moment. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Criminal Justice, intro 1954A, COVID reporting. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1956A, Conditional Release Commission. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Health, intro 1961A, Contact Tracing Reporting. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Immigration, intro 1836A, prohibiting the use of the word alien in local laws and other documents. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 632 and Reso 1327 through LU 635 and Reso 1330, Lennox Terrace. Filed pursuant to letter of withdrawal. LU 659 and Reso 1331, 311-313, Pleasant Avenue. Coupled on general orders. LU 660 and Reso 1332, 993-995, Union Avenue. Couple of general orders. LU 661 and 662 and Reso 1333, 226 West 96th Street. Couple of general orders. General orders. Uh, will the clerk please take a roll call vote on all of the items that are coupled on today's general orders calendar? This includes legislation and land use items. Adam. Congratulations to all of my colleagues on your phenomenal legislation and thank you all for all of your love and well wishes. I proudly vote aye on all. And Bree Samuel. I vote aye on all. Ayala. My condolences to Council Member Adrian Adams, and I will eye on all. Baron. Council Member Baron. Sorry, I forgot to unmute. Are we just coupling or are we voting on the items as well? We're voting on everything right now. Okay, I'd like permission to explain my vote, please. Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you. Uh, I'm voting aye on all with the exception of land use 661 and 662. Uh, those are, that's a, a bill for development, which I think does not adequately reflect the need for people who are actually of low income to be able to qualify. We call it an affordable housing plan but yet we go up to 120% of the AMI for a family of three. And it's my belief that that's not really affordable in the numbers that we see reflected in this project that would match what the numbers are in New York City. I think that the council member was able to shift some of the apartments to a lower uh, AMI, but when you still have uh, 80, close to 80% of the project, at market and at 120% of the AMI, I don't think that we are addressing the needs of the people in the city. So for that reason, I'm voting no on LU 661 and 662. Thank you. Borelli. Thank you, may I briefly explain my vote? Commission granted. I'm starting now. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm going to vote aye on all except intro 1836 and preconsidered uh, 1956. I do want to say uh, how proud I am that today's bill uh, about EMS pay parity, uh, which came out of my committee earlier today, uh, passed unanimously, and I think uh, it will also today in the stated meeting. Um, it is something that I know Danique has worked on for many years, and it's something uh, Speaker Johnson has taken a keen interest in, and I am glad we are pushing this forward today because uh, one of the, the worst parts of my committee 
is having to look uh, people in the eye who are EMTs, who work uh, incredibly long, difficult, uh, and dangerous hours and explain to them why uh, they can't afford to, to work an honest job for the city of New York and pay their bills. Why EMTs who have five years on the job in many cases make less than the starting salaries of other city uh, employees. So this is a great uh, development uh, and uh, let's get this across the finish line. Thank you. Brandon. All right, at all. Cabrera. Uh, my prayers are with Councilman Adams and with that, I'll go to I. Chin. I have a I on all. Cohen. Uh, I am voting uh, no on 1956 and I on all other items on the general order. Constantinidis. Uh, with condolences to Councilmember Adams, with you know, our family is thinking about you today. Uh, I vote aye on all. Carnegie. You have uh, myself and my family's deepest sympathy, Adrian. Uh, I vote aye on all. Deutsch. Councilmember Deutsch. Uh, no one intro 1956 and I and the rest. Diaz. Si en todo. Drum. Uh, with uh, all sympathy to Adrian Adams, Councilmember Adrian Adams, we love you. Uh, I vote aye on all. Eugene. who are facing this very difficult moment, and I put all in our yes and all. Thank you. Gibson. Permission to explain? Permission granted. I'm Thank starting you. now. Thank you, Mr. Public Advocate, and good afternoon, Speaker, and all of my colleagues. Um, I want to congratulate all of our colleagues who are passing very important legislation today, but I especially want to speak up in support of the uh, resolution uh, introed by Councilmember Borelli and Councilmember Miller that relates to EMS salary parity. Um, and certainly I wanna dedicate my vote in honor of a fallen EMT, Yadira Arroyo, who was fatally killed in the line of duty back in March of 2017, a 14-year veteran of EMS uh, that served our community at EMS Station 26 in Morrisania in the community of our district in the Bronx. And she was working overtime at the time that she was tragically killed because we continue to not recognize the value and all of the hard work of our EMTs. And certainly this is a step in the right direction. And I really hope we make sure that all of our EMTs are paid equitably as every other first responder is. And so Yadira Arroyo was important to our community and I dedicate my vote in support of her memory and certainly to her family, we continue to lift them up in prayer. Um, I also wanna express my condolences and prayers of comfort, strength and healing to our sister, Adrienne Adams on the loss of your beloved father. Uh, we love you, we support you, we're always here for you during your time of need. Um, and with that, I vote aye on all items on today's agenda, thank you. Jonai. Adrian, my condolences to you and your family on the loss of a loved one. Uh, it's difficult times for all of us, but none more difficult than for those that have lost loved ones. So uh, I'll keep you in my heart and prayers. I vote aye on all except 1956. Gordon Chick. Uh, permission to briefly, very briefly explain my vote, Mr. Public Advocate. Briefly granted. Thank you very I'm much. Starts now. Um, to my sister, Adrian, I, I can only tell you my daddy's gone uh, 21 years plus. I speak to him every day and I use his wisdom 
and he guides me um, in his path because that's what fathers do. Um, uh, on my colleague, uh, my other member of the Jamaica Avenue Caucus, uh, Danique Miller, uh, last night, just two houses away from me, uh, we smelled smoke and of course there was a fire. My neighbor's house was on fire and um, the fire department was there, uh, 10 units in total responding, including rescue four um, from I think Jimmy Van Bramer's district. But um, the point is that when uh, the fire trucks arrived, they arrived with EMTs. Um, they all came together and they all put themselves at risk for the people of the city of New York. And it's the least that we can do to make sure that they are paid a proper day's salary. Um, and they can take care of their families as they take care of us. So um, with that, I vote aye on all, uh, with the exception of 1956A, on which I vote no. Thank you, Mr. Public Advocate, and um, thank you all. Holden. My condolences to Adrian. Uh, sincere condolences. It's terrible. Um, I vote aye on all, with the exception of intros 1956A and 1836A, of which I vote no. Kalos. I don't know. King. Uh, good afternoon and condolences again to our sister Adrian, sending us prayers, healing prayers and strength for you and your family through these trying times. I definitely identify. And to everyone who's passing Legislation Day, congratulations and I vote aye on all. Cool. My sincere condolences to Councilmember Adams and her family, and I will eye on all. Kozlowicz. My condolences, love and affection to my friend, Adrian Adams, and I vote aye on all. Lanceman. Adrian, my sincerest uh, condolences, and I vote aye. Lander, that's permission to explain. Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you, Adrian. You also have my deepest condolences. I, I know that your dad was very, very proud of you and, and rightly so, um, but it's just such a rotten time to lose somebody when you can't be there in person to have hugs and like share memories in that way. And so I'm so sorry, and uh, I hope the ability to share memories has been has been helpful, even if not in person. Um, uh, Denise, congratulations on this rezo. Long before this crisis, you were on the front lines of calling out the disparities. You know, the Daily News had such good coverage on the Times and uh, what it has taken to call this to people's attention. Um, it's a shame it has taken this long. Um, but I'm grateful to you for leading us on it and I really hope in this budget uh, that the mayor will hear us and that we'll be able to get this done. Um, and finally, I just I want to say to all of my black colleagues, um, it's a hard time right now just to be a human being on planet Earth. But boy, it is a really hard time to be a black elected official in the United States of America. Um, like the, the you all of you are folks who have been fighting for civil rights and for racial justice your whole lives. I mean, then at this moment to have all this disproportionate black death around us in COVID um, and seeing all these disparities. And then just at a time when maybe you would think that a crisis could kind of bring us together and help us overcome some of our divisions, that in fact, somehow what happens is that racism is elevated um, as hard, um, as hard for all of us, but obviously, and uh, you know, a system of of white supremacy that puts some of us in positions um, of privilege um, and that does so much harm. It, it's, I see it and, and I just wanna let you know. So, um, uh, uh, you know, and that you have as much solidarity as we can give and a commitment to work with you um, out of this rage on that set of issues. So I vote aye on all. Levin. Um, Adrian, I want to offer my condolences as well on the loss of your father. Um, I'm very sorry. And um, uh, we're all with you. Um, uh, and we'll, we'll continue to be with you every step of the way and helping you and your family to get through this. And we love you. And with that, I vote aye on all. 
Levine. I also want to extend heartfelt condolences and much love to Adrian and her family. And I will be voting aye on off. Lewis. My heartfelt condolences to Council Member Adams. Um, I'm here for you, praying for you. Um, and we'll continue to keep you in my thoughts and prayers. Um, I proudly support my colleague, Council Member, sorry, I didn't ask permission to explain my vote. Sorry about that, public advocate. Um, I'm just proud to sponsor this bill, Council Member Powers, 1956. As a Black woman, I feel that it's important um, for us to diversify a commission and to continue to uh, magnify the voices of those uh, that go through mass incarceration. This is an opportunity for us to bring in restorative um, justice advocates to continue to magnify the voices of those that can't speak to themselves. Thank you. Myself. Yes. Menchaca. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you, Public Advocate. Uh, just a few hours ago today, the Committee on Immigration voted unanimously to move intro 1836A, uh, led by my colleague, Councilmember Moya, by removing the dehumanizing word alien from official documents here in the city of New York. And as the chair of the Committee on Immigration, I couldn't be more proud. New York City is an immigrant city and more than 3.2 million of our residents hail from all over the globe, yet still call this home, the New York City home. And as the chair of the Immigration Committee, I understand that the well-being of immigrant New Yorkers are interwoven into the well-being of all New Yorkers. And so with this law that you are all voting on today, uh, New York City will be the first in the country to remove hateful anti-immigrant language from our city laws, rules, documents, and materials. Communities of color uh, specifically have historically been targeted, intimidated by the use of racially charged language and the term alien is dehumanizing and reinforces discriminatory attitudes towards immigrants of all colors. Uh, and so I vote aye on all and uh, Councilmember Adams sending you love and light. Thank you. Miller. Councilman Miller, you're muted. Aye. Aye again. Thank you. <laughs> Moya. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you, uh, Mr. Public Advocate. Uh, again, I want to send my condolences to um, Adrian Adams uh, on the loss of your father. Uh, my love, my prayers uh, go out to you. Um, we love you very much, and uh, we hope that you're doing well uh, during this very difficult time. Um, I want to uh, take this opportunity to, to thank uh, the speaker uh, for his support, uh, my colleagues, uh, and the staff, uh, Harbani uh, Ahuja, uh, who worked on this legislation, uh, and Megan Taddeo and Jason Goldman as well. And thank you to Chairman Chaka. Uh, but this is a really important piece of legislation um, because no human is illegal. Uh, this term isn't neutral, it isn't fair, uh, and it's just not accurate. Uh, and let's take a look at the accuracy first. Uh, more than 60% of undocumented immigrants entered this country lawfully and simply overstayed their visas. Uh, that's not even a criminal offense. Uh, those who cross the border unlawfully are only in violation of a misdemeanor uh, in the eyes of the law. They're no different than a jaywalker. And yet after a jaywalker is done crossing the street, they're not branded as illegal. Nobody shouts illegal at them on the street or on Twitter. Uh, it's not some scarlet letter that they're forced to wear forever. As a son of immigrants, uh, I know your immigration status uh, often has no bearing on how some prejudiced people will characterize us. Uh, but the city of New York doesn't need to support or participate uh, in this divisive behavior. Uh, those words uh, aren't just inaccurate, they're loaded with hate. They're used to dehumanize the very people who ironically embody the American dream. And these are hardworking men and women who came here in search of a better life for them and for their families. Because for generations, 
this country has advertised to the world that this is a land of opportunity available to anybody willing to work for it. Time. Those words don't belong in uh, civil discourse and absolutely don't belong in our city's guiding documents. My bill intro 1836 would replace the term alien with non-citizen wherever it refers to non-citizens in the city charter and administrative code. It would bar the city from using the term alien, illegal alien or illegal immigrant in the law document or materials unless referenced in the federal law or programs. Words matter, these language that we choose Council to, member, to ask you to wrap up. Power and consequences. Uh, I wanna thank everyone um, for their support on this legislation uh, and I will be voting aye on all. Thank you, um, Mr. Public Advocate. Thank you. Perkins. Except for no for 1956 and a no for LU661. Otherwise, aye on all. Powers. I and all. Reynoso. Condolences to my colleague, Adrian Adams. Uh, I will I and all. Richards. Congratulations to my colleague, Councilmember Miller. Uh, Moya and Powers on some great pieces of legislation today. I vote aye. Rivera. I vote aye. Rodriguez. My condolences to Councilmember Adderney and I vote aye. Rose. Um, I'd like to say to Danique Miller, council member, um, thank you for always fighting for the working people. And um, to my little sister, Adrian, I want to send my love and condolences and prayers. Um, it's a tough time, but we're going to help you get through it. And I vote aye on all. Rosenthal. Um, if I could ask... Uh, to be signed on to 1954A and 1961, and then I vote aye on all. Thank you. Salamanca. Phil Condolences to Council Member Adrian Adams. I'm sorry for your loss, um, and I vote aye on all. Torres. I and all. Traeger. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you, public advocate. And uh, like all my colleagues, I want to also extend my heartfelt condolences uh, to a phenomenal leader, uh, to a person who I am proud to call a friend and a colleague one of the hardest working officials we have in the entire city of New York who speaks up for her district like no other. And to my colleague, Councilmember Adrian Adams, we love you, we have your back, and uh, you know, we're always gonna be here for you. And God bless you and your family, you're always in our prayers. Um, I wanna also give a big thanks, uh, shout out to uh, my, my labor colleague, Councilmember Danique Miller, who always, as my, as my colleague, Councilman Rose mentioned, always champions working people. Um, this is long overdue. This is the right thing to do. Uh, people that are putting their lives on the line uh, who are barely making ends meet. Uh, so thank you. And uh, also remind my colleagues that the council has always stood for working folks. It was only about a year ago, it feels like a decade ago that we worked in advance the issue of pay parity for early childhood teachers where we saved UK, we saved many programs from collapse. That's what we do. We always look to fight and protect the safety net of the city of New York. So with that, I thank my colleagues for the leadership and, and, their, and their great uh, voices for working people. And I vote aye on all. 
Ulrich. Uh, with my deepest sympathies to my friend and colleague, Adrian Adams, uh, I vote aye on all with the exception of intro 1956. Thank you. Valone. Mr. Public Advocate, good to see you. May I have a few moments to explain my vote? Since you said it was good to see me, yes. Thank you. Time, <laughs> time starts now. Adrian, your father is so proud of you. You carried him with you everywhere you went in life, and especially in these last few months and weeks. Uh, I know how hard it was for you to express that publicly, but in the end, when you did, we prayed with you and we felt your pain. So just know that we're all with you, and he is so proud of the leader and the superwoman that you have become. Uh, just wanted you to know that always. And on the votes today, I vote I and all, with the exception of Preconsidered 1956. And I, just to give you some context as to why, um, this went quick, it went fast, and the, the concerns to it really didn't get a chance to be brought out. So let me just give you a quote from my district attorney, one of the cats in Queens, uh, and this is what she said. To take the decision of early conditional release out of the hands of the parole board and place in hands for a few appointed members removes a judicial process and system that began with the trial conviction and judicial sentence, which is already considered these factors. To rush and vote into a place with a new commission without structure and coordination with the existing parole board that is already doing this is very concerning. Those words are, are troubling to me. Uh, I believe we should have some more time to think about this. Uh, I sat on the, on the Board of Corrections for years. Uh, there's a lot to go through. Um, so if we're going to do this, that we must work and figure out how it's going to work in conjunction with the existing parole board to make sure the rights of all are considered, uh, that we're not duplicative and not causing concerns and more problems. So uh, I thank you for the intent. Um, and I vote no on that one and I on everything else. Uh, God bless everyone. I hope they had a wonderful morning. Van Bramer. Permission to briefly explain my vote. Briefly granted. Thank I'm you, sir. Now. Uh, I just want to say, uh, Councilmember Adams, you're an incredibly strong woman. I've always known that, but watching you uh, sit through this meeting, uh, through all these tributes uh, to your father, uh, just uh, reinforces uh, what a strong woman you are. So I just want to say again, uh, my condolences, but uh, also great and deep respect for your strength uh, to be uh, here and, and participating in this meeting um, on behalf of your constituents and your family. Uh, with that, I just want to say I, I proudly vote all and I want to just echo uh, the speaker spoke about uh, Larry Kramer uh, and the role that he played in the lives of all of us. Uh, and I wrote yesterday that he was fighting for my life uh, to be able to live as a gay man uh, long before I even knew I was a gay man. Uh, and I'm grateful uh, to Larry Kramer and also Christian Cooper, uh, who I also know for over 20 years uh, and who is uh, an active birder and is one of the smartest and most gentle uh, men I know. And um, uh, what happened to him uh, was wrong, but the truth is it happens every day uh, to black men and, um, uh, and it's wrong. And I'm glad Christian uh, spoke up about it and posted that video. Um, but uh, much love to Christian, but uh, uh, we have a huge problem uh, in this country with racism and uh, with black men being under attack uh, on a daily basis. And, um, and we've just got to continue to speak out against it. So uh, thank you to all of my colleagues for the great legislation. And with that, I vote all, I and all. Jaeger. Vote aye on all with the exception of introduction 1956 and 1836. Thank you. Matteo. Uh, I vote no on 1836, no on 1956, and aye on the rest. Combo. Permission to explain my vote, Mr. Public Advocate. Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you. From 
one Spellman sister to another Spellman sister, from one daddy's girl to another daddy's girl. Adrian, my heart goes out to you. My prayers go out to you. The most challenging thing I think to be is a woman and a woman elected leader. Our roles are so challenging in terms of protecting and nurturing our families as well as our communities. And I thought about you and the vulnerability so much as I also have a dad who's over 80 years old and just wanting to protect and hold up everyone around us. So we love you. Your father got to see you do so many things from becoming chair of the community board to the New York City Council, to becoming chair of the Black, Latino and Asian Caucus and doing so much and passing so much critical legislation. Your dad is proud of you, will continue to be proud of you and will be your strongest guardian angel in heaven watching over you. So watch out world, you haven't seen anything yet from Miss Adrian. Um, I proudly vote aye and thank you. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye on all. I want to thank, uh, again, everyone in the council for working collaboratively over the last many weeks as we have been trying to continue with the people's business. I vote aye on all. The vote on all items for today's general order calendar is 50 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, with the exceptions of the following. Land use 661 and 662 with companion resolution 1333 has a vote of 48 in the affirmative, two in the negative, two in the negative and no abstentions. Introduction 1956A has 39 in the affirmative, 11 in the negative, no abstentions. And intro 1836A has 46 in the affirmative, four in the negative and no abstentions. Thank you, and to the extent as possible, I'd like the clerk to please add my name to 1836A and 1062A. And with that, the items on today's general order calendar have been adopted. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills are referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Discussion of res resolutions, as a reminder, Please wait until the Sergeant at Arms begins the countdown clock before you begin your remarks. Are there any council members signed up? Mr. Public Advocate, Council Member Miller has signed up for discussion of resolutions. Thank you, Council Member Miller. Time starts now. Uh, Danique, you have to unmute yourself. Right, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker and Mr. Public Advocate. Thank you as well. Before I, I speak on uh, Reso 1062, I, I, I would uh, like to just acknowledge and thank my colleagues for all of their kind words, not just about this, but acknowledging the plight of Black men, men of color throughout the, the country that we're seeing. And, and certainly uh, Brother Christian and, and, Flo and Brother Floyd being at, you know, one might say at total different ends of the spectrum, but at the end of the day, as Malcolm said, it, it's, it's not because you're Muslim or Christian, it's simply because you're Black. And, and that is a very unfortunate situation for all of us uh, to have to endure. Um, this body uh, will be voting on a Reso 1062 calling on the city to give more, uh, more than 4,000 EMS, EMT paramedics of the FDNY EMS who have the strongest representation of women and people of color of any uniform forces uh, services in, in the city and they uh, to, to have the pay that they long deserve as first responders. The administration has neglected th these brave public servants by paying them a fraction of what is an overwhelmingly white counterpart uh, in the fire department Un until recently, the diminished and until recently diminished the value of these life save the life saving work that these uh, men and women do for over eight and a half million New Yorkers. Nearly 900 EMS members left their jobs in the last two years to earn tens of thousands of dollars more as New York City firefighters through a pipeline that has served uh, to help the FDNY compensate an abysmal racial and gender diversity outside of the EMS force. Uh, which came actually by virtue of a federal lawsuit and have to mention the Vulcan, Vulcan Society in this as well. The disparity in paying, uh, pay blocking the upward mobility of the city's um, 5 million New Yorkers of color and women 
uh, has magnified by been magnified by COVID-19. At the outset of the pandemic, the FDNY had directed only EMS would respond to emergency calls where COVID-19 uh, COVID symptoms were reported. This was followed by a series of confusing, incomprehensible orders, such as requiring pregnant women and COVID-19 infected two uh, members not showing symptoms to report to the work and restricting their use of- Council member, gonna have to ask you to wrap up, please. Uh, okay. Mr. Public Advocate, if we could just allow Councilor Miller to, to finish his remarks. Uh, I know he worked hard on this. Thank I'm you. with it. Thank, thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, and, and one out of uh, four EMS members called out sick during those horrific weeks during uh, the, the time of exposure. And, and part of this parody also talks to the fact that they do not have unlimited sick. Um, so we want to dedicate this to folks like FDNY paramedic, Crystal Cadet, which many of us know who stood us with us on the steps of City Hall, who testified before the committee and who herself ended up the last six weeks in the hospital in a coma due to COVID-19. And, and that's how this thing is really brought home. And, and to talk about my good friend, uh, El Haj Malik uh, Idris Bey, who served uh, EMS during 9-11, uh, uh, and, and, and now passed from uh, COVID uh, three weeks uh, back, as well as certainly um, the many other uh, members of EMS that, that had perished during, during, during the COVID. But most of all, I wanna thank uh, this council. I wanna thank the speaker for his leadership and, and his support. I wanna thank the Black, Latino and Asian Caucus, as well as the Women's Caucus. I wanna thank uh, Chair Borelli for the leadership that he has shown in the fire and safety. And, and, and so when you look at that, <laughs> when you look at that, all of those that were involved in, in really getting this uh, 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 to the finish line, um, it shows what happens when we work together. But it also, as, as uh, was mentioned earlier, this is a just um, by, by um, uh, Council Member Traeger, this is a just uh, council who stands uh, up for workers and, and, and equity. And so this was at the forefront of pay equity. I want to thank everyone, including those unions uh, that were involved uh, as well. And um, I look forward to the passage of this legislation. So thank you all for, for your support. Councilor Miller, you did a great job on this. I'm really glad we were able to work on this. And I also want to thank uh, Councilman Borelli, uh, who chaired the committee on helping get this through as well. He has been an advocate for this. So I want to thank both of you for your hard work. And uh, the Black and Latino and Asian Caucus for their leadership as well. You and Councilmember Adams have done a great job in that. So thank you. I, not to, I'm, I'm sorry, not to, but but Councilmember Adams, who happens to have a daughter, who is EMS officer, who happened to also have contracted COVID-19 as well. Not to to add to that. So thank thanks. You. Steve. Thank you, Danica. I hope I, I get some credit for the extended time too, even though the speaker <laughs> is the one that. Uh, do we have anyone signed up? Anyone else signed up? Hold on one moment, Mr. Public Advocate. Uh, Councilmember Reynoso. Councilmember Reynoso? Yeah, time starts now. Uh, thank you for that, Public Advocate. Uh, today we're introducing legislation to support small businesses here in the no, city no. of New York. Council Member Reno said. We're, oh, I'm we're, sorry, was I on mute? You, no, no, we're, we're not at that point yet. We're discussing resolutions. We'll go into general discussion. In a I apologize. So I wanna um, not speak at this point, sorry. Okay. Mr. Public Advocate, there are no other speakers for discussion of resolutions. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, resolutions, resolution number 1062A, calling on the New York legis New York State legislation. Sorry, calling on the New York State legislature to pass and the governor to sign legislation automatically classifying the deaths of all municipal employees who died from COVID-19 as line of duty deaths. We have a voice vo a voice vote on today's resolution. If you wish to vote against or abstain from today's resolution please notify the legislative documents unit. So I guess folks will have to take themselves off of mute so we can hear your voice, voice vote. Will all those in favor say aye? Aye. 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 aye.
Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye again. Aye, aye, aye. Okay, mute everyone. <laughs> All opposed, say nay. This is like old McDonald had a farm. Any abstentions? Just by a little bit, the eyes have it. <laughs> we will now uh, have a general discussion. As a reminder, please wait until the Sergeant at Arms begins the countdown clock before you begin your remarks. Mr. Public Advocate, now we will have Council Member Reynoso followed by Council Members Koo and Adams. Time starts now. Thank, Thank you, Sergeant Arms. Council and thank you, public advocate, this time. Uh, but we're introducing legislation today uh, that is going to be supporting small businesses here in the city of New York. Um, the restaurants and uh, the food industry in our city has been struggling just as much as uh, any other businesses in our, in our city. What we're going to do today is open up sidewalks, streets, and plazas for our restaurants so that we can start getting them back to work. We're gonna do it in a way that is, that is safe um, and follows uh, health guidelines, uh, but also uh, make sure that the process is something that can be done very quickly and in a timely fashion so that we don't need to uh, uh, have bureaucracy and red tape hold back the potential um, that these businesses have once we're um, able to reopen. I wanna thank uh, Speaker Corey Johnson. We've been talking about reimagining street space for such a long time to get us to this post-pandemic new New York. And this is exactly what we're talking about, allowing for our small businesses to finally open in an appropriate way and reimagining our street space to allow for us to do just that. I'm looking forward to pushing this legislation so that we can get restaurants like Blend on the Water in Long Island City, um, some space on the sidewalk and also the Cuchiflito spot in the South Bronx and allowing them to also have some space and this couldn't have been done without the support of many advocates and especially the speaker. Uh, and I'm looking forward to getting my colleagues on board to supporting our small businesses and showing that the city council is here, um, making sure that they're not left behind during this pandemic. Thank you so much for your time. Council member Cool, followed by council member Adams. Time starts now. Thank you, Mr. Papa Advocate. Thank you. I want to quickly thank our speaker for spearheading a set of comprehensive guidelines and recommendations for the city to reopen beaches this summer. This plan is critical because we simply cannot open the beaches without giving the public access to the water. If we do, people are going to get his stroke. Like the plan to open beaches, we also need a plan to open the rest of the city and revitalize our economy, small business, and restaurants. Any movement forward should be based on the data to keep us safe. We need to continue educating the public about the importance of wearing masks and social distance. We need to enforce the rule of law to keep people safe and prevent reinfections. But we must also give our businesses a chance to survive and get back on their feet. I'm looking forward to working with all of you on rebuilding our city. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Cool. Uh, and I will have Council Member Adams. Your time starts now. Thank you so much, Mr. Public Advocate. It's good to see you in that seat, even if we are on Zoom. Um, I don't even know where to begin. I know I'm going to run out of time, but I really, um, I think I'm going to start with. Um, I, want to, I want to make sure that Councilmember Adams has enough time as she needs to make her remarks today. So let's not put her on the clock. Go ahead, Adrian. Well, thank you, Corey. Corey, I'm going to start with a big virtual hand clap. Um, to um, the passage of Reso 1062, um, spearheaded um, by our colleague, Danique Miller. Um, it's been a long, hard fight, I believe, even longer than I've been in this body. 
Um, as one, it was mentioned that my oldest stepdaughter is, is an EMS worker. She's on the front line in Far Rockaway in Councilmember Richards District. She is a single mother of four, and she has worked very, very hard for a long time to get to where she is right now, a proud EMS worker who is feeding a family, my beautiful grandchildren. And to see this happen today, to be such a proud co-sponsor of this legislation makes my heart feel very, very proud, very proud. She was a very early victim of COVID-19 doing the job that she loves to do so, so much. So it's very ironic, but um, she came out of it like the trooper that she is, hard back at work to the job that she loves and the parent and the wonderful mother that she loves to be and is still to this day. So thank you so much for passing this legislation and I'm so proud to be a co-sponsor of this bill. Um, I don't even know where to begin. Uh, Corey, your tribute um, to Irvin Eady, um, as his church members calls him, the great brother Irvin Eady, uh, thank you so much. You have been there since, since day one and you use the word roller coaster and that's the word that I use with you. Um, I think there are only two other people that were with me pretty much since day one, a part of this body, and that would be Councilmember Inez Barron and Assemblymember Charles Barron, who are close family friends, who know my family, knew my dad, uh, knew my uncle uh, very well, who passed a couple years ago. So you all have really been with us since day one on this ride. Um, and to say that it has been um, cruel um, is putting it mildly. My dad went in to Long Island Jewish Hospital on March 26. Um, my sister and I and my husband, we took him there, believing that he was suffering symptoms of congestive heart failure, a condition that he's had for many years. We took him in and we masked him up. And uh, to our surprise, we were even so naive, we didn't even realize we couldn't go in and register him and get him settled into the hospital. So March 26th was the last day that I saw my dad in person. Um, as I waved a kiss to him, as they wheeled him away with a mask on his face. Um, unbeknownst to us, we found out that uh, he had been tested upon entry into the hospital. And he had indeed been a victim of COVID-19. So as we thought we were bringing him in for his illness, we were actually traveling in with COVID-19. Something that, again, impacted my own sister who is an attorney some days later without even realizing it. She's fine, by the way. Here we are. Um, two months later, almost to the day, and where we thought that we would be bringing him home after two tests of negative, testing negatively since his admission into the hospital. So upon discharge, he would have been COVID negative. My dad said, nope. His spirit said, I am not going to a nursing home for long-term care. Instead, I am choosing to go to my heavenly home where I can rest and where my daughters will not have to look at me with pity. And so it is with that that we wish him the safe travel that we know that he has. I say thank you again to my speaker, Corey Johnson. Thank you to Jason Goldman taking all my tests and giving me calls. Thank you, Women, Women's Caucus, all of my love, Vanessa, Debbie, Thank you for holding my hand virtually. Thank you, Danica and Donovan. You already know what you are to me and what you've been to me through this process and through this experience. To all the hands that reached out to me, council staff, public advocate, Jamani Wilson, Williams, I'm sorry, admin on the mayor's side, my constituents, goodness, my colleagues in government, my amazing team, Adams, Jamal Wilkerson, Stacey Yearwood, Kate Mooney, Ty Hankerson, Brendan Jackson, 
Shafina Box and Chanel Riley. I thank you all for embracing me as your member and loving me as much as you do. Thank you, colleagues. You are my backbone, as my dad was the backbone of St. Mark AME Church in Jackson Heights, that district led by <laughs> Council Member Moya. These are such extraordinary times, colleagues. But then again, so was my dad. Thank you. Love you. That was really beautiful, Adrian. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Adams. Uh, that was a beautiful tribute. I, I never knew your dad, uh, but I know you. Uh, and I know that's the biggest testament to who he was. Um, and as I said, um, you know, having lost my dad, it doesn't get better, as they say, but you learn to live in a new reality. Uh, my dad's birthday just passed, and I want to tell you what an elder told me uh, with prayers of peace and comfort. Uh, may your ancestor speak to your soul. Uh, do we have anyone else signed up? We do, Mr. Public Advocate. Uh, we're going to have Councilmember Gibson. Councilmember Gibson? Time starts now. Thank you so much. And Councilmember Adams, my sister, I love you so much. And I too have lost my dad. And I know that each day it gets better because your dad's assignment on earth was complete. And he now begins his new assignment in our heavenly, heavenly gates of our father. So I love you and I continue to pray for you. Uh, thank you, public advocate and speaker and all of my colleagues. And I too want to add my voice to everyone that really continues to express condolences and prayers to everyone who's been affected by COVID-19, the 21,000 plus New Yorkers we've lost, those that remain on the road to recovery, uh, and certainly public advocate and others. Uh, we are pained, we are pained as African-American men and women when we see what has happened to our brother George Floyd, it is heartbreaking. It is a painful reminder of the racist society we continue to live in and that for too many of our black brothers and sisters, being black in America is a death sentence. It is painful to watch this man talk about not being able to breathe and having a police officer's knee in his neck. Uh, we have to do better as a society, as a country, and I look forward to working with all of you on a local level to make sure that we continue to build relationships. It is unacceptable that for some reason in this, in this world, Black people are a threat to some, and that should never be the case. Those are our brothers and sisters, and we have to continue to protect them and lift them up. So I pray for the Floyd family. Uh, for his sisters and so many relatives that are mourning during this time. Um, I wanna call my colleagues attention to two pieces of legislation that I've intro today. The first being intro 1951, which will require the Department of Youth and Community Development to develop and disseminate information on guidance for youth and families regarding youth online activity. Time. Uh, in this COVID world, we want to make sure that our youth have access to more programs. So I ask all of you to join me on that. And the second bill is intro 1952 that relates to a COVID tracking expenditure that I've intro with Council Member Traeger. Thank you so much, colleagues. Thank you. Mr. Public Advocate, point of parliamentary procedure. Thank you very much. Uh, we have to uh, go back and- Mr. Public Advocate. Can you hear me? Uh, first, oh. Council Members Rodriguez and Barron, uh, we see that your hands are raised on Zoom and we're going to lower them. Uh, you are on the list for general discussion. Uh, Mr. Public Advocate, we need to go back to resolutions to make sure that the correct text of Council Member Miller's resolution is read into the record and that we vote on the correct text. Thank you. Uh, so we're going back to the resolutions portion. Resolution number 1062, calling for the salaries of New York City emergency medical service personnel to be comparable to New York City's firefighters and police officers. We will have a voice vote on this resolution. If you wish to vote against or abstain from today's resolution, uh, please notify the legislative documents unit. Um, I just want to clarify that this is uh, 1062A or 1062, which we'll make sure we get it right. 1062A. Thank you. Uh, so we'll be voting on 1062A. 
Will all those in favor say aye? Aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Any abstentions? Shockingly, once again, just by a little, the eyes have. Okay, Mr. Public Advocate, we will now move back to general discussion and we will hear from council members, Lewis, Barron, and Rivera. Council member Thank Rodriguez. Thank Time you. starts now. Thank you. I would like to ask my colleagues to please join us tomorrow in a rally that we have at 138 in Broadway together with Councilmember Levine, a Centro Mirabal sister, Congressman Espaillat and other in an effort to save Pisa's Olga. Olga is an icon in the community as a pizzeria that unfortunately is taking the risk to be closed. So one thing that we we'll like to be sure is that we throw all the support to them. And again, one more time, a reminder that we should and we must pass the Small Business Jab Survival Act. Uh, in the last couple of days, I have gave some new language to the staff to be sure that the legislation that will bring fairness to the small business when they sign and renew the lease is only to be applied above 96th Street in some area, especially on the council member Kalina Rivera. So hopefully they, they, they re-stay in order they can see with us and pass this bill. The second thing that I would like to invite everyone is to look at the bill that I submitted today. When I hold a press conference with a gold medal Olympic winner, Ms. Presco, who stand with us today in the effort to push the city of New York to work passing the bill that I introduced, which is to create this New York City Sport Department. The coronavirus showed the two new city, the poor and the rich. Sports have to be seen from the point of equity. Poor, Black, Latino, and Asian, they don't have the same opportunity and path through sports. And the bill that I introduced today, again, will create the sport, the New York City Sport Department, already been supported by Amanda from Ron, New York, Ken Baxiba from Bike, New York, from Michael from the Hobson Sailing, and hundreds of other baseball, basketball, and other sport disciplines that believe that the city of New York should have the sport department to bring initial legislation to support sport activities. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. And just to uh, correct the, the lineup, we have next uh, Council Member Lewis, Council Member Barron. Angus, baby. I'm going to put Sissy in her bed, okay? Okay, my love. Someone needs to be on mute. All right, uh, Council Member Lewis. Time starts now. Thank you, Council Member um, Adams, for sharing your dad with us and um, my. Continued prayers with you and your family. Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you, uh, Speaker Johnson, for your continued leadership. Thank you, uh, Mr. Public Advocate. But today I'm introducing two pieces of critical pieces, two critical pieces of legislation. The first one, a resolution 1324, calling on the DOE to partner with nonprofit organizations to provide pro bono legal assistance at schools to help families with housing issues. Um, we've seen positive effects of partnerships between the DOE um, and nonprofits in the past, um, expanding food access, health and social services. So adding housing to the list is the, the most we can do for students here in New York City. The second bill is intro 1953, which would be a local law to mandate the NYPD to report on its public health enforcement. In the past few weeks, we've witnessed a string of high profile encounters with NYPD exposing injustices along racial lines um, regarding black and brown people. Um, and it's now coupled with racial disparities with enforcement on public health orders. So the NYPD has a responsibility to be transparent in regards to how they're implementing um, enforcement and social, social distance enforcement. And we need that data in order to continue to do what we do here at the council. Um, and I also wanna thank my co-sponsors, Councilmember Rivera and Salamanca for your support. And thank you, Speaker Johnson. Uh, thank you, Councilmember, uh, particularly for that, that last bill. Uh, it's sad that we have to mandate the NYPD report this. My office has asked for some of that data and we still don't have it. Uh, so I'm glad to see your leadership and I hope the council pushes forward with that. Uh, Councilmember Barron and Councilmember Rivera. 
Your time starts now. Thank you. Uh, my prayers and condolences go to all of those who have suffered losses and particularly to my sister, Adrian. We're keeping you in our prayers and we just believe that this is going to continue to strengthen you. You have a great legacy that you'll be continuing and hold on to your faith. Don't let go of your faith. Secondly, this uh, pandemic adds to those events that have highlighted the institutionalized racism that pervades our system in this country and is in the United States structural DNA. Dr. Martin Luther King said, uh, of all the forms of injustice and inequality, injustice in healthcare is the most egregious, he didn't say egregious, is the most shocking and inhumane because it often results in death. So now we know that there's a phrase, we're all in this together, but we're not all in the same boat. Some people are in ocean liners, some people are in yachts that have protections from their taxes by the state. Some people are in rowboats. And unfortunately, there are some who just have life jackets. And until we talk about not just the underlying health conditions, but the underlying physical conditions that we are facing, we're gonna to continue to be in this situation of inequities in health, education, uh, hunger, access to food, employment, and even uh, able to get jobs in this era of homelessness and mass incarceration. So what I wanna say that when we get through this and come back to our ports, we've got to do things differently. We can't have a paternalistic policy of other folks telling black and brown people what it is they need and how they should get it. We can't have other people telling our children, take this and then you'll be able to get this going into specialized high schools when we've seen historically um, that that does not work. We can't have police killing us and getting away with murder. You've got to look at an elected civilian review board that will have the power to impose the sanctions that are appropriate. And I said, we've got to look in this budget to maintain funding for CUNY, for the ASAP, for those are the programs that are gonna give people coming out on the other end an opportunity to do better. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilmember Rivera. Time starts now. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Public Advocate, echoing all of my colleagues in terms of how we move forward equitably and to Adrian. Thank you for what you said. I think you really moved us all in realizing what we've lost. So thank you for the time to all of my colleagues. Congrats on the passing of your bills today. And to Council Member Reynoso, I have to thank you for your leadership on supporting our New York City businesses while better utilizing our public space. I've seen you fight for our restaurants and the Cuchi Frito spots around this specifically and for the many, many workers that they employ. So thank you very, very much. I wanna bring attention to a resolution I'm introducing today calling for the state to issue clear guidelines to ensure the New York, that New York hospitals patients Bill of Rights applies to all hospitals, including temporary emergency and field locations. COVID-19 has severely impacted us and stretched the resources of New York hospitals and healthcare providers. Throughout this crisis, we saw our hospitals overwhelmed with fewer and fewer beds available as the pandemic continued, resulting in coordination at the city, state, and federal levels to create publicly operated and privately operated temporary sites in our city. And though the intent was and always is to save the lives of our fellow New Yorkers, field hospital operators like Samaritan's Purse unnecessarily incited concerns that patients may receive biased or unfair treatment in their 68 bed emergency field hospital in Central Park that closed earlier this month. This organization led by Franklin Graham who has a history of promoting homophobic and transphobic biases and has called the LGBTQ community immoral and detestable was requiring its volunteers to agree to a written affirmation that marriage is exclusively the union of one genetic male and one genetic female. This is not only morally wrong, but reflective of bigotry that has no place in our city or our healthcare system. Every um, must guarantee patient rights, regardless of who they are, who they love, who they worship. So I ask that you join me as we approach Pride Month and we honor the legacy of pioneers like Larry Kramer and all those who have fought against injustice in medicine to sign on to this resolution. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilmember. Do we have anyone else signed up?
We do, Mr. Public Advocate. We have four last members, Council Members Richards, Cornegie, Traeger, and Majority Leader Cumba. Thank you, uh, Council Member Richards. Time starts Thank now. You, Thank you, Public Advocate, and say their name, Gregory, Gregory Floyd, Amid Aubrey, Brianna Taylor, and so many others that we've lost uh, to senseless violence and racism uh, right here in our country, even during a pandemic. Um, so may we continue to carry out, not just in words, but in deeds by policy and budget, um, and continue to say proudly that Black Lives Matter. Today, I would like to introduce my, uh, urge my colleagues to sign on to my bill that requires the Department of Small Business Services to report by borough on the allocations of loans and grants issued and received by small businesses impacted by COVID-19. Um, when you look at the stats of where SBS put their financial assistance, you'll see Manhattan has received by far the highest percentage of loans and grants, 66%. In Queens, we received 9%, Staten Island received 5%, Brooklyn 18%, and the Bronx only 1%. And even as we recognize that uh, Manhattan is the economic engine of our city, it's important to remember that the outer boroughs like Queens are the oil that keeps the engine running. I would like to take a moment to emphasize that the big roles our small businesses play are key to thriving neighborhoods and economic security across the five boroughs. So I'm urging my colleagues to sign on. We need to make sure as I start to see too many rental signs popping up, popping up in my neighborhood that SBS is delving out those resources in an equitable fashion uh, so that we can get people back to work as well and ensure that we can protect uh, our financial stability right here, uh, especially uh, in black and brown communities uh, to address many of the plights that our communities already are facing even through the pandemic. So with that being said, I urge all to sign on. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Carnegie, followed by Council Member Traeger and Majority of the Combo. Time starts now. Thank you, Public Advocate Williams. Um, this is a very difficult conversation for me to have with my colleagues. Um, I wanna thank those colleagues that are not of color who've spoken out against what they've witnessed. Um, but that black man that they talk about every single day is me. As a father of six, four black boys, um, it's very difficult for me to witness and watch it and live um, when I know that we're suffering from post-traumatic post stress disorder as, as blacks in the country, when we know that what we saw uh, mirrors uh, the murder of Emmett Till and how a white woman accused him of whistling at her and later, decades later on her deathbed, recanted her story and said that it was a lie. So we know that uh, the law enforcement has been weaponized against the black man for so long. And to witness this again in this era, in this time period is 100% post-traumatic stress disorder. So when you see uh, black men like myself who are in leadership with you, uh, please understand that there is um, a, a stress and anxiety that's put upon us that makes it almost impossible to lead effectively. But some of us show up every single day regardless of that, knowing that it's important for us to be present and accounted for even in these difficult times. So I want to thank my colleagues. Councilman McCornegy, we lost you. Is Councilman McCorney still there? Well, um, maybe we can, when we get Councilman McCornegy back, can we give him uh, another uh, 45 seconds to finish his statement? So if someone could just let me know when he gets back on. And we'll go to Council Member Traeger. Thank you, Public Advocate. I want to it's turn my colleagues. Now. Thank you, Public Advocate. I want to turn my colleagues' attention uh, to in intro 1952, I'm proud to work with my colleague, Councilmember Gibson, that would establish a COVID-19 funding tracker bill, which will create a city website that would include expenditures of federal, state, and local funding to address the pandemic, including grants, loans, and city contracts. Uh, I want to point out that in the early parts of this pandemic, we already saw gross inequities and how they added even hospital space. The Javits Center, Manhattan. The Comfort, docked by Manhattan. All of the added hospital tents, Central Park, Manhattan. 
we had to fight like hell for hospital space for testing. And so this is another lesson that we also have to apply from Superstorm Sandy when we learned that a lot of the spending to help our communities was not reaching initially the hardest hit areas. So we have to make sure that all of these precious resources are reaching the hardest hit communities uh, that I represent as well. Coney Island actually has the fifth highest death rate per capita in the entire city of New York. We are not just about the Wonder Wheel. We're not just about a beach. People live here, people died. We've lost soul, we've lost lives here in this community. And we have to make sure neighborhoods like mine and many of my other colleagues' neighborhoods, which were hard hit, see the resources they deserve to help their residents. I and ask my colleagues for their support. Thank you, Public Advocate. Thank you. We're gonna have uh, Council Member, I'm sorry, Majority Leader Combo, uh, Council Member Kozlowicz. Majority Leader? I'm waiting for him to say time now. Time starts oh. now. <laughs> Thank you so much, public advocate. I'm devastated, angry, and conflicted. The killing of black men and women is the most important issue facing this country, period. This is not an issue that we can continue to think or believe that because I am not black, this does not affect me. One only need look at the uprisings in Minneapolis over the killing of George Floyd to see that the entire city that entire city is going to be impacted over this tragic death, and rightfully so. I, like so many other Black elected officials, thought if I got elected as a Black woman to the New York City Council, I could do something to end the assault and killing of Black people. I thought if we protested peacefully, shut down bridges, boycotted, traveled to D.C. on mass for marches, we could do something to end the assault of Black people. We've done sit-ins, die-ins, made t-shirts, signs, wrote op-eds, press conferences, flooded social media with videos. This is my third I can't breathe t-shirt. And I can't watch another video while being shut in and be a loving, caring, and nurturing mom to a two-year-old during this pandemic. I thought being at the table with law enforcement, commissioners, and administrators, that we could have a meeting of the minds to end the assault and killing of black people. What we are seeing in the burning of Minneapolis are people who feel they have no more hope, trust, or faith in this criminal justice system or country and have taken matters into their own hands. The potential of America is great, but I believe we are destroying the promise of America and doing irrevocable damage to the people that our children and children's children will inherit. Black history for our children is now learning about the name of the most recent black man or woman to be killed at the hands of law enforcement. As a black mom of a black son, I am over the moon and overjoyed when people tell me how cute and adorable and funny they think my son is. And I wonder what will happen when he is no longer considered adorable and considered a threat to society. When will, uh, it, begin? When will it begin when he's 12 years old like Tamir Rice playing cops and robbers or 14 year old like Emmett Till just walking into a store or 17 years old like Trayvon Martin taking a walk with his Skittles and hoodie. I don't know how to love my son at this point. Should I not get too attached? Should I not love him too deeply? Should I always prepare myself for this to happen to him? And what does that life look like? Dr. King said, if a man has not discovered something he will die for, he is not fit to live. And I will close on that. We need to do something in this country. And if we do not, it is gonna be the demise of the entire country. Thank you, public advocate. Thank you so much, Joy Leader. Uh, we have Council Member Kozlowicz. Thank you. Now. Thank you. I wore a hoodie in protest when Trayvon Martin was killed. I lied on the ground in front of City Hall when Eric Garner was killed. And I will do anything. I am outraged at the killing of George Floyd. It has to stop. Police are supposed to protect us not kill us. And I, my heart goes out to my fellow colleagues of the Black and, and Latino community. I'm with you. I will do anything it takes to help you pass the word of how you feel. I also want to uh, condemn Amy Cooper for what she did. I think it was disgusting. I think it was outrageous and shame on her and she deserves whatever punishment she gets. Thank you. 
Thank you, Council Member. Do we have anyone else not signed up? No, Mr. Public Advocate. Thank you. Um, I want to take a, a second myself. Um, first, uh, congratulations to everyone who passed legislation today. Um, this has been, it's been a very rough time and I just want folks, and I, I appreciate the allies who spoke uh, on the issues, but, but I want people to really understand uh, how difficult this is. And just trying to get through COVID and see the disparities that happened there, the disparities that didn't have to happen to the black and brown communities, to then have the police respond to those same communities, to then see Aubrey Ahmed, to see uh, Ahmed Aubrey not have justice for Breonna Taylor, then to see George Floyd. It's a lot. And I thank my colleagues for standing up and saying that it's a lot. And yesterday I said that I'm not okay and, and we're not okay. And very often we do not have the space to say that. We have to continue to go to work. I especially wanna shout out the black women who spoke today. They in particular uh, don't have spaces at work to speak because when they do, they're viewed as angry black women. And I want folks to see how interconnected what Amy Cooper did is with George Floyd. So it is not enough for us to speak about it. We have to make changes. Everybody knows someone who was killed or heard a story killed by police. If you ask, and talk to any one of the black women here, they'll probably tell you of a woman like Amy Cooper who got somebody they know fight. These are real stories that we have to deal with. Someone texted me yesterday, I'm so sorry, I pray for you, please do not allow all of this to get you sick. And then her last words were very, very strong for me. I have never been okay since I learned there was a difference between them and me. And that's something all of us have to learn at some point. And how we deal with that every single day for our entire lives is a drip, 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 drip that creates a bucket. And I remember my first time, I was in a shoe store, a floor shine, a young, young kid with my mom. And I remember a young white, young kid, boy, he was younger than me. He pointed and said, he's stupid, right, mommy? And I, I, I didn't do the math, I didn't quite understand. But I remember my mother looking at another black woman who was there and telling her, don't worry, he understands what's happening about me. And I didn't until she said that, but then it, it struck me and I understood fully. And I remember as a teenager trying to ask people for the time and they clutched their purse. These are things that many folks do not have the ability to speak about or they're told, why are you always bringing up the race card? Slavery was a long time ago. It is hard, this is a hard time. There's a lot to deal with. This virus does not discriminate. So I lift up and continue to lift up the voices and the stories of everyone in every social economic sphere who is hurting right now. But our responses and our policies do discriminate and has allowed black and brown communities to hurt disproportionately and then to have to deal with this. And then to see the highest ranking black police officer, a deputy commissioner say, we have bigger fish to fry. I was stunned. This is from a NYPD that routinely tells us that there is no discriminatory discriminatory uh, discriminatory policing, that there is no racism in the policing. We cannot fix the problem if we do not talk about what it is. So I'm asking that this council, as we have a budget coming up in June, to remember what is happening and how we got here and to push back on some of the things that the mayor is doing and Make sure that our budget reflects all of the things that were said here today. Because what we're asking for simply is equity. But I understand too fully that equity is dangerous for some people. And as though a lot of people talk about it, they do not say it. Or they do not really want it. 
So I, I am not okay. I know others are not okay. I want to give people the room to say that. But it seems like the institutions that allow us not to be okay, there's too many people who want it to be that way. So I just wanted to say peace and blessings to everyone, love and light. And I thank you for allowing me an opportunity to speak. And with that, I will send it back to our uh, speaker, Corey Johnson, who I thank for his words and for leading this body to close the state of meeting. Thank you, Mr. Public Advocate, for those incredibly moving and important words that we all need to hear right now. I really appreciated hearing from the majority leader and from so many colleagues who spoke today. Uh, the stated meeting of May 28th, 2020 is now recessed. Thank you all very much. Stay safe. Bye-bye.